welcome to our uh, 10 o'clock press conference this morning. We have some fantastic news to report uh, regarding the state health plan that uh, will affect over 150,000 of our uh, retirees uh, that are associated with the state health plan. You know, uh, you've often heard me say that the state treasurer is the keeper of the public purse, and a few years ago, a big responsibility of that purse was to manage the state health plan. And as I look behind me, uh, we have some great folks here who are going to speak in a moment. But when you look to the banner to the far left, what you will notice is that our loyalty are to the participants of these plans. That's what our fiduciary responsibilities are. And a few moments ago, I met Virginia Emanuel from Robinson County, North Carolina, who is retiring after 50 years of public service to our state, to the school system. And the reason I mention her today is, is that when we think about negotiating contracts on behalf of our participants, we think about people like Virginia. Virginia, thank you for your service, and we'll give her a round of applause here. So. Uh, this is quite a celebration today. Uh, we are announcing that uh, we are putting a bow on extending our Medicare Advantage contract for our uh, retirees. That Medicare Advantage product is currently being offered to our retirees by United Healthcare. United Healthcare is represented uh, here today. Uh, we appreciate uh, Yolanda coming and also Carl coming all the way from Charlotte from United Healthcare. We also have Dee Jones, who's the executive administrator of the State Health Plan, Chuck Stone, who represents the State Employees Association and others in the audience from Scenic, and also Richard Rogers, who's the executive director of the of the uh, Retired uh, State Employees Association. So why are we here today? We're here today to announce that we are holding premiums steady for next year for Medicare Advantage participants in the state health plan. Now all of you who have reported on this subject over the last uh, few years understand that across North Carolina, people's insurance rates are going up dramatically in some cases. We have been able to take advantage of our buying power at the state health plan, and we have signed a contract that those premiums in North Carolina are not going to be increasing next year. This has been a Herculean effort uh, with folks in the state health plan partnering with the folks at United Healthcare. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mark, who's at the back of the room here. Mark has been crunching a lot of numbers on this uh, throughout the year, throughout the year, and we appreciate his participation. We also uh, want to uh, also, uh, at the, in a moment, we're going to talk about a call to action. There was the potential for these premiums to go up 25% this year, but we have renegotiated this contract to hold the premium steady. But we're also asking the North Carolina congressional delegation to take the lead on an issue that's not only affecting North Carolina, but every state across the union. And that issue is something called the health insurance fee. Now, people don't wake up thinking about Medicare Advantage programs, sorry, Carl, but they really don't, <laughs> until something goes wrong. Right. <laughs> they don't wake up thinking about congressional things like a health insurance fee. They wake up in the morning thinking about how we're going to educate our children, pave our roads, and all the other core functions of our government. But this health insurance fee has been sunset for the last couple of years. And that sunset is going away for next year. If we had the health insurance fee sunsetted in Congress, which we're going to be asking our North Carolina delegation to take the lead on this, we have the potential of actually decreasing premiums for our Medicare Advantage product by 25%. So we're very pleased that we're able to report that premiums will not be going up, actually going down, even including the health insurance fee. I appreciate the State Health Plan Board uh, for their participation in approving these rates. And now I'd like to uh, turn it over to our uh, first speaker, Chuck Stone. Mr. Treasurer, thank you. On behalf of the 51,000 members of the State Employees Association of North Carolina, we'd like to say that we applaud the work of the Treasurer, the work of United Healthcare, our vendor, 
and the work of the state employees in the state health plan office for the great job they've done in renegotiating this contract. Not only have they managed to maintain the benefits without increasing premiums, uh, the advantages of the Medicare Advantage plans and the extra benefits offered through those plans are indeed a, of great value to retired state employees. Now, as the Treasurer has noted, there is a national fee that's part of the Affordable Care Act, the Health Insurance Providers Fee, which is in effect a tax not only on the state health plan, but on other health insurance plans throughout the country. And again, we join with the Treasurer and United Health Care and other health care insurance companies in asking Congress to uh, either continue the moratorium on these fees or to actually repeal those fees. And finally, last night, as I was listening to the evening news, I was struck by the comments by Senator John McCain, cautioning his fellow senators to stop listening to the bombastic loudmouths and saying that he would not vote for a shell of a bill that is currently before the Senate regarding health care reform. And I have to contrast that with the approach offered by our treasurer, Treasurer Falwell, and that nationally for six years we've had this loud debate and noise in the background regarding repeal and replace, a slogan which, as Senator McCain noted, is meaningless if all we're doing is voting for something uh, because, quote, it's better than nothing. I would suggest it is better than nothing if that's all we vote for. Fortunately, Treasurer Falwell has adopted a different approach. His is what I refer to as the lab approach. He listens and he learns. He asks good questions. And then he brings people together to come up with creative solutions that, as we've seen in this case, are benefiting both the taxpayers of the state and those covered by the state health plan. In closing, I would suggest that Congress should heed the words of Senator McCain and that Congress indeed could learn from the lessons that might be, have been taught by Treasurer Falwell and that they should perhaps consult with him on creating positive solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. And uh, now we'll hear from uh, Richard Rogers, who represents the uh, retired uh, State Employees Association of North Carolina. Richard. Thank you, Mr. Falwell. Uh, I am Richard Rogers, Executive Director for the North Carolina Retired Governmental Employees Association. It's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, our association has more than 70,000 members, and we represent all 300,000 local and state retired governmental uh, employees across North Carolina. While we represent and advocate government retirees on many issues uh, that they face, needs from COLAs uh, to fraud and abuse, we also uh, advocate for them as far as health care cost. Uh, health care cost is one of the most important because the impact of rising health care costs have on retirees on their fixed income. Increased health care costs also is a major challenge for our health care providers, United Healthcare, as well as our uh, administrators of the state health plan and uh, Treasurer Falwell. Understanding the challenges in this renegotiation of the Medicare Advantage Plan for 2018, the association applauds and appreciates the work of both the Treasurer and United Healthcare. So I would like to thank the Treasurer and his staff for their wonderful efforts in keeping the Medicare Advantage program uh, strong. Uh, and premium free for retirees. I would also like to thank United Healthcare for providing a quality health plan for retirees of North Carolina. State retirees are fortunate to have the benefit of a health care plan. The state is obligated to provide retirees a quality health benefit plan that is premium free. The renegotiated contract provides quality health insurance 
premium free and honors the commitment of the state to the Medicare eligible retirees. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, behind me to my left is uh, Dee Jones, as I mentioned, who's the executive administrator of the state health plan, who has been very involved in this and obviously with a lot of work from our uh, legal team represented by uh, Sam and Andrew uh, to my right. As I close and open it up for questions, I uh, just want to remind you that uh, going forward, we're going to sign contracts that benefit folks like Virginia and the other state employees. That's who our loyalty is to. And uh, we will do that going forward on every contract, whether it's a subscription to a newspaper or something as large and, and, uh, and fantastic as the uh, United Healthcare Renewal. Uh, I'll be glad to uh, answer any questions that you might have. Uh, and I'll also say that I will not leave this room if anybody has any questions from the media on any other subject. I will not leave this room till all of your questions are answered on any other subject. But let's try to keep the questions right now to, to this issue. So uh, with that, I thank all the participants, and I'd like to open up for questions. Travis. I, I wonder if someone from United Healthcare or perhaps someone else in this program can address how these negotiations have gone in the state whether this is typical uh, reworked contracts this year or for aging. If you'll allow me, I'll try to address that because the, the United Healthcare folks are not represented by their, uh, the folks that normally answer those questions, and I'm sure they would direct those. Uh, they'd be glad by the, end of the, by, the, by the end of this day, they'd be glad to directly mm. respond uh, to your question, right? Exactly, correct. Okay. Uh, I can tell you how this one's gone. <laughs> I have a whole satchel of uh, just only pertaining to United Healthcare, and people in this room are all laughing because they know about my satchels. But uh, I have a whole satchel related to uh, United Healthcare. This has been a, a long process. Uh, we uh, had to go through, legal had to go through an 800 page document, which was the original contract that we're now extending. Uh, we had to uh, 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 line that back up. Uh, and then we had to set these rates uh, uh, for next year. Uh, I will tell you that given the fact of uh, the contract that we inherited and the fact that we and they are being hit with this health insurance fee nationally, there was the potential for these premiums to go up at least 25%, and that's a very conservative number. So for us to be able to hold those premiums, which last year, Mark, were $120.85? Last year they were $125.85, this year they're $120. To be able to hold those premiums level, given the headwinds that we were facing financially uh, with this contract, I think is, uh, was a Herculean effort on behalf of the State Health Plan, United Healthcare, and the stakeholders. So, you have a follow-up? Uh, to be clear, it's the state that will save money. Retirees will see no financial impact. They, they, they will they will either pay more or less, is that correct? At least in premiums? There is a subset, and I'll stand corrected on this, there's a subset of people who pay uh, because of uh, they pay dependent coverage that will also benefit from this renegotiated rate. Okay, so if you pay for dependent coverage, you will pay a little less, everybody else will be flat, is that? Yes, everybody's gonna be flat, a little bit less, yes. And Mark can put a little more, a little more color on that at the end of the meeting. Anything else, Travis? No, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Who does this benefit most? Well, who it benefits most are the participants in the plan. And when I came down to this room initially, I was, I was looking at what the presentation that was behind me, and it's, it's fitting that we start over here with this banner because as fiduciaries of this plan, our loyalty is, or, is to the participants of the plan. And no disrespect, our loyalties are not to United and not to the stakeholders but the stakeholders represent a lot of members in the plan, obviously. So the biggest beneficiary is to the participants. They also, the, a large beneficiary, I think, is to United Healthcare, because United Healthcare now has 75% of this business, and it started, it didn't even have a Medicare Advantage product four years ago, Chuck. So now 75% of North Carolina retirees above the age of 65 are now with this, with this plan. We're hoping by this time next year that we'll be able to report that that 75% has gone to 90. Because if you 
did what I did recently, which is to go to a, a drug store when I had a, a need an antibiotic for a dental procedure. I noticed somebody or state retiree in there fumbling around with a Medicare card, a prescription Part D card, and then the backstop state health plan card. When you're on the Medicare Advantage product, and Carl's mom's on this product, right? Correct. When, uh, and father. And father. I <laughs> uh, hope I didn't violate HIPAA when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I ask a lot of questions in these meetings. I want to know where, I want to know who, uh, uh, I'm, uh, so my point of saying that is that to see somebody walk in with a Medicare Advantage card and show one card, whether they're going to the doctor or getting a prescription filled or whatever they're doing, it just reduces the complexity and I think builds the value so that United Healthcare can take advantage of the buying power of the state retirees. I will tell you in our signature newsletter that comes out of our defined contribution plan, it was reported just last quarter that the average female over the age of 65 in this state will spend over $260,000 on health care for the remainder of her life and the average male will spend about $200,000 for the remainder of his life. So being able to stabilize these premiums on behalf of people like Virginia across the state so that they have certainty about what their costs are going to be, those are the beneficiaries of this announcement. This is, a, is this a one-year deal or is this for the fiscal year? This is a one-year deal. At the end of 2018, and uh, they know how I roll. I know how they roll. So we'll, uh, we'll hopefully uh, this won't be uh, quite so laborious next time. So, Sue. Um, what was the biggest challenge um, in renegotiating the contract, just in terms of looking at the uncertainties, um, you know, related to healthcare and tax reform? Good. Well, the biggest challenge was something I wasn't even aware of two months ago, and that is this health insurance fee, the sunset was going away. And to, to know that we were gonna have to increase premiums on retirees, given the fact that this fee was gonna be hitting us for the first time in two years, that was undoubtedly uh, the largest challenge facing us. Follow-ups? There's a lot of people in the room uh, who work for the State Health Plan. I'd like for all of you to raise your hand and uh, thank you for your service. The, you know, Congressman Howard Coble used to go home and thank his mom for the Sunday dinner and she would say, well, Howard, it just didn't jump up on the table by itself. You know, this contract just didn't jump up on the table by itself. It was a lot of hard work. Appreciate the communications team uh, for putting this together. Uh, I'll be available to answer any questions the press may have about other positive things that are happening in the treasurer's office. And uh, we, this contract is now signed. Uh, we will uh, be launching into uh, open enrollment in September. Correct. September? You can't answer that, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, we'll be uh, launching an open enrollment. We look forward to partnering with the uh, with uh, Richards Group and also Scenic uh, to uh, educate people about the value and the virtues of, uh, of having the Medicare Advantage product. And uh, we really appreciate all of you coming out and uh, covering this today. Thank you very much.